Okay, good morning and welcome to Practical Emotional Intelligence Conversation. Hello everyone, uh, I see Pragya and uh, who is the other person? Akshay. Hi Akshay. Hi Amrita. Hello. So uh, Akshay, uh, I am. Uh, I understand this is your first call. Uh, yes. Uh, hi Amrita. Yeah. So uh, is there anything that you have read or heard any recording before? Um, I got in touch with I think just a few days back and uh, I've started going through the uh, recordings from day one on LinkedIn so far. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, go on and try to uh, get more uh, insight into the uh, the uh, conversations that have been uh, happening so far. So I'll catch up uh, as soon as I can, Ambika. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I just wanted to understand if you know um, what the space is and whether uh, you're clear about what is happening here or something like that. Uh, I have a basic insight about this, but uh, I'll uh, catch up as we go on with today's call. Mm, yeah, 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 sure. So uh, just to reiterate that uh, this is a contemplation space. Where uh, yep. we don't have like an agenda or a particular topic in general, but we just try and see what comes up, whatever is important to us in that moment of time. So when I mean us, it means the facilitators, that's me and Sachin, and also the participants who join in the call. And then whatever topic comes up, we all take it ahead in uh, whatever form and shape it, it wants to progress. So um, sure. it's like a playground that we have made and people can come and play as they wish, as they want. At the same time, it's not about like movies or politics or something like that. We only discuss uh, the playground is made for a particular game and that game is emotional intelligence. So okay. that's what it is. Yes. And we've been discussing in spite of the fact that we have not had a particular topic in mind or an agenda. It's been a beautiful journey because we have really touched depths of mindfulness and listening and uh, judgment and many other things. So we believe in this process and it has worked so far and I'm very happy to have you today. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Can you also tell us a little bit about your understanding of uh, emotional intelligence? Uh, okay, uh, I believe emotional intelligence is uh, one of the uh, behavioral uh, aspect of a person, especially when it comes to balancing uh, an approach to professional as well as personal life. So it is something which is just going to uh, help in uh, maintaining the composure, focus, as well as in as well as handling the uh, stress and anxiety uh, when it comes to dealing with any of the goals or tasks, uh, day to day uh, activities as such. So uh, it's it, I believe that it has more to do with uh, basic uh, common sense and uh, civic sense, other than uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, what do you say, uh, cross-cultural uh, ideas or anything like that. It, it is quite uh, broad and, uh, to be honest, it is quite generic to everybody across uh, the planet. It is not specific to any particular region. So this is what is my uh, uh, thought process regarding uh, industrial intelligence. Okay. Uh, and um, what is your interest in this topic? Uh, what is the reason for joining this group and these calls? So one okay, reason I, 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 was looking... you, I invited you to join, so that's what I know. But uh, what was your interest in showing showing that interest to join? 
Okay. Um, I've been following the few entrepreneurs for a while now. It's, uh, it has to do with some of the ideas that I have in place for myself and uh, where I'd like to see myself in the future, at least uh, in the next uh, at least five years down the line. So looking at that and looking at uh, what I want to do in the future and uh, with, with respect to my plans, I believe I need to gather more insight about what an entrepreneur is supposed to be, uh, what are the basic uh, instincts that an entrepreneur is supposed to have, and uh, try and develop those skills. And the best way to do that is actually by interacting with people with experience and uh, people uh, interact, interacting and engaging in conversation with people who have been in the industry, who have seen the market, who have seen the uh, uh, difficulties or uh, challenges that are associated with uh, uh, starting a company or uh, uh, coming up with an idea or a product and launching it in the market. So I'm just trying to lay a foundation uh, as of today so that in the future when I'm going to start building, there's going to be a solid foundation which is not going to crack under the pressure of the building. Okay, okay. no problems. Um, just something I, I, I'll want to share with you um, and I, I'm thinking that perhaps with Pragya this would have been uh, obvious by now. Um, something for you to keep in mind. Um, one thing is that, as yeah. you mentioned, that, um, you want to develop these skills. Uh, so I would like yeah. to let you know that uh, emotional intelligence is not so much about developing anything, but it's actually about giving up a lot. So oh, yeah. the reason okay. I'm sharing this with you is so you keep that thing in mind that here you come not to gain anything, but to actually lose. And, um, sure, sure. And, yeah, and, and, and that intelligence is already there with all of us. Um, yeah. It's just hidden by so many factors that it is hidden uh, and once we once we just lose those layers that hide it um, emotional intelligence is like sun and um, yeah and we are like clouds right now so our knowledge our um, our experience everything is like clouds yeah so we are not building sun we are only revealing it by getting rid of the clouds. So a lot many times you will find that your own knowledge, your own understanding, your own experience, your own perceptions are actually coming in the way for you to practice emotional intelligence. You are always capable of practicing emotional intelligence. You just think that you need to develop something. Um, so for some, for, for, for next some time I would ask you to put that thought aside that you are developing anything. Um, just focus on the parts that I already have it when what is hiding. Oh, it's a second question. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah. I think. No, he said, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Grace, uh, let's so today morning, um, something has been on my mind, and if you uh, have checked my LinkedIn, then maybe you have uh, already seen it. But um, so I and Sachin follow this teacher called Muji, and we listen to his talks quite frequently. And uh, so he asked, uh, "What is ego?" And uh, usual definition of ego is like some bragging, boasting about something or something that is a little manipulative part of a person. That's what ego is generally termed as. And uh, he said, but you know what? It's not only that. It is also the very humble one. And uh, whatever you take seriously, uh, like in the sense that you think you are a doctor or you think you're a facilitator or a coach or a or a politician or 
or a CEO, whatever identity you feel that, oh, I am like this or I am this. He said that is easy. So I wanted to uh, contemplate and I've been contemplating since morning and I thought I'll share with, with you guys also. What are your thoughts? Do you think a humble one is also an ego? Well, that's a nice question that you have put across. Never thought in that way that even this could be one of our egos. Whatever we have been doing on our professional front, personal front, okay. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I, it also came from a point of um, point where I read like uh, i've been very active on linkedin with this campaign in last few weeks and i i see a lot of people saying that uh, you know this company donated this much or they made masks or some breweries are producing sanitizers right now and whatever also but at the same time i found individuals who said that okay my company is giving this much but i am giving this much and it's going to be transparent or things like that i don't remember who said it but there was someone like that yesterday and i think i i found it to be uh, whose need is it really getting fulfilled in this process is of the person and i'm taking this person only as an example as a part of me doing it not to condemn or criticize anyone but this part is present in all of us right like yesterday we were talking about gratitude and uh, you know you said Pragya that I feel that gratitude but at the same time I also see a sense of embarrassment that comes when we promote something like this and that had actually started it, the thread in my head I feel since last yesterday's call that oh okay yeah you know it could not be very nice for me to receive that help like this and it being popular so i i yeah i've been thinking about these many dimensions of this topic so it's like what is ego then you know if muji says this and we have a certain definition definitely but then just taking that identity of I am helping someone very seriously or I is capital in this process. That is also ego and how is it? Uh, Akshay, I saw the light was blinking on your side. Are you wanting to say anything? Uh, well, I... It's really hard to uh, talk about uh, mixed, you know. Okay, uh, my my basic understanding is something something like this. Mm -hmm. What what is it? Yeah. Uh, well, like like you said, either is something that you uh, the basic definition of either is something that you associate with self-esteem or self-suspect or some, some, something like that, which is actually uh, related to how you boost your uh, personal confidence uh, to a certain extent. That's what you associate either with. But finally Akshay, speaking, so, your humility, sorry, your sorry, modesty, I'm, even your... Actually, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, your voice is not very clear now. Mm. Um, very muffled. We are actually struggling to make out what you are saying. Are you talking from... Uh, am I audible now, Sachin? You are audible. No, I am just... Uh, uh, a lot of I don't know. I don't even have... So I'm actually speaking directly to the phone. Uh, can I, I'll, I'll do something. I'll just uh, log out and uh, call back once again. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So we just four people are there on the call today. Huh? Sorry? We are just four people on the call today. Yeah. If 
Kur uh, yes, uh, this is the Okay. Yeah. So then we were talking about ego. Okay. So what I say that any work that is done at any point in time, if we have a sense that it's done only due to us, maybe that's called ego. Where we have a sense of fulfillment. However, that is practically impossible. It has to be the contribution of multiple people at other levels, which we might not be able to see. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, you know, um, it, it reminds me of, uh, of interdependence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, in a, in Gandhi Ashram, I, I spent some time there volunteering. Before you take uh, food, you it's like a circle where you sit with your food, and uh, they ask you to thank 365 hands. So what does that mean is that uh, this morsel of food that you're having, it has mm -hmm. come uh, and passed through minimum of 365 hands. And uh, usually we just think if we have to say thank you to someone who makes the food or who grows the food. But actually mm -hmm. the person who grew the food, like particularly the farmer or particularly who, mm -hmm. whatever, it, it actually matters that, you know, where the pots were made or where the fertilizers came from or where it was transported from and all that. So they could count those also. And they would say, the yeah. tank all the 65 hands in that in this to to bring it uh, in the sense of gratitude for all of them and not just us. So I feel what you're seeing is like you know the interdependence we experience in the world today, where we are trying mm -hmm. to say that yeah I have done this or whatever. Like there's a sense of ownership also of the task uh, to get done, mm -hmm. which is great. But at the same time, the sense of credit or uh, that I'm the only one who's doing it is also very strong. Yeah. So I, yeah, I totally agree to that point. So one more thing that comes to my mind is that um, why do we think like this? Why do we feel that uh, I have done it? That I feel the sense of ownership, but I also feel the sense of pride, or uh, right. uh, or in this process, why do I feel like that? I should just discard all the other three sixty five hands who have, who have contributed, something like that. So why why do we do this? Why this? Uh, identification or I don't know what to call it right now but why this clinging also to this concept that I have done it? why do we think like this maybe to make ourselves confident that we are above than others this could be one of the reasons yeah to feel a superiority complex or something like that. Right. Yeah, could be true. Sense of superiority and such and such. Do you think? So, he's saying, so to get stars <laughs> or uh, appreciation or recognition. So, we have a system of stars in Muji International. So whenever someone does something good, we give each other stars. Mm -hmm. like three stars, four stars, five stars. It goes up to ten stars. And it depends on what you have done. So, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Sachi. Mm -hmm. What else? What else is the reason? Why, why do we want to have all the credits? So that gives a sense of contentment, okay, that we have done something. This could be another reason. Yeah. 
Yeah. Akshay. Yeah. Hi, Hi Akshay. Akshay. Hi. Sorry, I had a difficulty joining the call. Am I uh, clear now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And hi Swati. Okay. Uh, I see Swati also just joined in. Hey, hi. Hello. Here. I had to join. So, <laughs> I'll just repeat the question for you guys. What we contemplating on today? We're contemplating on the topic of ego. And Pragya brought a beautiful uh, point that uh, we feel we we have done it. So that the reason why we have uh, the ego or what's happening is because we feel that we have done it, and I have done it alone, or I have to feel superior. That's why we have this identification or this strong question. Yeah. So we, yeah, I was saying that why there is identification to the roles or this uh, idea of uh, being something. Like for example, um, ego is not only bragging or boasting or whatever. That's one definition. But I was listening to some talk today, and uh, Muji, Muji's talk, and he said that. Ego is also the humble one, the people who are doing social work or see someone is a CEO or someone is a mother or whatever. Whatever role you think you are, and now that you believed in this idea so much that I am this, I am like this, I am that, that is also ego, and it could be very very humble. You know, someone who does a lot of seva or someone who he does a lot of meditation and everything. So, what we are exploring today is that where does this come from? Uh, one, this idea that I am this, I am that, and I have done it, so I have to uh, have that sense of pride. Also, a last question on that one is that is it is it possible to live without? Okay, yeah, that's is also a good question. To, so whether it's good ego or bad ego, whatever we are saying, it's like this one or that one. Yeah. Um, Uh, Sachin, yeah. about this, I uh, have a little bit of uh, an opinion over here because I don't think it is necessary that we actually live without it because sometimes it is quite constructive. So as long as you're, it's constructive and as long as it is going to help you on the, on the long run, mm. uh, it is not going to be uh, a big issue that needs to be dealt with. When it comes to associating humility, modesty, all these things with ego, it is not something that is actually affecting anyone around us, or the people that we work with, or the people that we have our lives with. It is actually something that is a component of uh, self-satisfaction that is associated to this particular aspect of the ego. So, it is always internal. It is only something which is going to be contributing to our own uh, consistent growth. As human beings, with respect to maturity uh, towards the problems that we handle, but when it, so it it is not going to be a issue. So only if it is something which is going to create uh, what do you say some kind of a, a competition, which is going to which is not healthy in a, a environment where multiple people are involved that. Becomes a problem, so it it is. Uh, I believe it is necessary to have this ego at to certain extent, but not uh, to a greater extent. So, in what way do you see the benefit? Okay, uh, when it, when it comes to having the self satisfaction, when you are happy with what you are doing, that that gives you uh, a sense of. Uh, uh, calmness within yourself that uh, makes you feel happy, that makes you feel uh, enthousi enthusiastic towards what you're going to do next. So that kind of a thing, that that kind of a perception towards uh, the next task or next goal that you're looking forward to is actually going to help a lot. It is going to help yourself. It is going to help the people for whom you're doing. It is also going to help the people who are working with you to actually achieve that. 
so when it's at a level of satis- self satisfaction so that's the reason why people a lot of people talk about job satisfaction or uh, uh, self satisfaction in their personal life or what do you say uh, inner peace something like that so when whenever you talk about these kind of things it is going to help everybody uh, who are involved in the whole uh, uh, activity but when you are looking at ego like yeah i have done this i am i am competing uh, competing against uh, so and so person for so and so reason and uh, i'm trying to go past this particular aspect yes when it just involves you trying to achieve your goals of course that is great but if it involves in trying to push others push others down a little bit that is not a, not an ideal case not an ideal way of ego that is the point when you start losing trust when you start losing people who with whom you can collaborate with whom you can uh, work together to uh, make things a uh, lot more easier with whom you can share your burden so that you can look at be- better things so when you start losing people when you start losing your opportunities it is not an ideal case mm. okay so so that, that that's the reason i believe having the ego with respect to you know on a personal level on a personal level very uh, uh on a humble level you could say uh sim- to put it simply on a humble level yes it's good mm mm-hmm. so um great input uh how about um the giant party what do you feel um hi um i think ego there are two questions the first is uh, it came from where so it came from i whatever mm-hmm. good or bad i we had it came from that so it's mine it's me i am like that i want this so how can this happen to me so this i needs to ego whatever it is it is good or bad if any achievement or oh, i did this so that that's a ego so whether it is team award a team leader will say it's my team who did it but then there is a ego so i uh, but then as shakin said um, are we really um, be away from it or can we avoid it no we cannot in any situation uh, the 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 proportionate ego will be there so we in yoga had the three level of practitioners adam madam and uttam so uh, the first two level will not uh, be able to subjugate their um, ego whether it is good or bad or, bad, or what kind of proportionate uh, proportion it should have in in daily life or it is a conscious decision we make uh, we should make while uh, we are utilizing it as i guess akshay said right now um, he had given an example so uh, this is this is how it works so it works positive it works negative but it again depend on us how we take the situation how we take that i on us so that's it from my side yeah. okay. Okay. then i wanted to understand how exactly um, the ego would work out into the positive way mm-hmm. so uh um... because go ahead no i just i was just rephrasing the question nothing else okay yeah so um ego if you see in scientific language and uh, as a definition means uh, a sense where uh, with where you come to know something is harmful uh, or something needs to be acted upon for example you face a tiger in in a in a jungle and now you know the lockdown continues we may have wild animals around anyway <laughs> but if you just see something and in that you have three responses it's uh, fight flight or freeze 
so fight is you fight it out flight is you run away and freeze you don't come to know what to do that is ego it keeps you in alert mode and uh, to to put that as an emotion comes uh, it comes with anxiety and when anxiety increases it becomes fear so that is if you ask me like the definition uh, of ego and i feel the benefit of ego is that it saves us from anything that is dangerous anything that is psychologically also dangerous as someone is putting me down for example how do i process it is my ego or how when i start boasting too much and if i have enough self awareness and i realize okay i was just boasting here or i am just anxious in this moment or whatever that is also an ego report so that that sense that we have uh, inherent capacity we have that's the benefit of ego that it protects you from uh, getting imbal- imbalanced losing your equilibrium yeah, in the, in the right words so that's how and i also uh, really appreciate what akshay said because that's very true specifically in corporate teams and uh, this kind of work we have, uh, i have also felt that you know a lot of people when it is good for themselves it's great yeah. but when it becomes i capital and in a team then it becomes a trouble so one needs to strike that balance of it doesn't go overboard um but i'm still uh, questioning the core where we started and i would like to dive deeper into this with all three of you that uh, how how is this how does this work like we say that there is a sense of satisfaction we get a sense of achievement i i understand that and we also need appreciation and recognition in this process but at the same time um does it make our identity stronger as uh, like for example i do something for my parents so then my identity as a daughter gets stronger you know that i'm a good daughter and i tell myself that how constructive how good it is for us does it can that also be a problem yeah uh, um pragya did, did you get your answer pragya is it clear what we are talking right okay yeah um but on the on the end of the uh, discussion that you were doing if uh, it helps us out in getting a certain like let's say that you mentioned that let's say someone is trying to bring you down and then your ego has set out so if the ego has been there then what is the difference between self respect and ego then right? so so uh, that's exactly what uh, i felt today that my definition of ego is expanded so ego is uh, when it's one side that is bragging pride and over possession on something that you are doing but at the same time the humble one is also an ego so i think self worth self respect all of this will also fall under the same umbrella um anything that you associate to and anything from where you feel good or bad or whatever reaction comes and whatever emotions come that is still ego then uh if i may can i just uh, make a point here yeah yeah uh okay uh i i understand it's a little confusing trying to associate uh, certain good things with ego so let me just uh, try to clear it out so that uh, it is not going to uh, make things a lot messier when it comes to understanding mm mm-hmm. so uh, m- my definition of ego is very simple anything that you associate it associate with your self esteem your self centric attitude is going to be an ego okay and uh, so what i would like to uh, bring to your attention is i want to be humble i want to be modest 
these are the kind of things that we start uh, thinking uh, to mm-hmm. develop our own uh, uh, persona, our own character, uh, character, and uh, our attitude towards how we are going to behave with people, approach a problem, uh, handle a few things in our personal life and professional life, and everything, every, everything, and so on. So anything that we start associating to ourselves is something that is a component of ego because uh humans as a species uh, human beings as a species we have just evolved a little further compared to the remaining uh, uh animals we have the ability to communicate uh, it's not that animals cannot communicate uh they do uh, but if you look at any set of animals there is always a set of uh, what do you say there is a survival instincts that kicks in very uh, at a very basic level but in humans the survival instincts doesn't kick in at a very basic level but it is actually kicking in at a different level which is what do you say uh, social living you want to live in social society but you want to exe- excel you want to succeed you want to do better so these kind of things so since we have the maturity to uh, express our thoughts uh, to communication uh, languages actions and everything so anything that we do always has the i component in it i am doing this it is my team or it is my personal life in which i have made an achievement it is my parents that i have taken care of and any any anything for that matter so whatever you start associating with you and yourself is a part of an ego in my opinion and as long as it is constructive which is not hurting anybody which is going to drive your passions which is going to uh, inspire people around you which is going to motivate them to do certain things which is going to lead towards a uh, uh, better and constructive uh, advancement what you could say that that is that is something which i would associate it towards a uh, positive side of the ego and anything which starts creating problems anything which starts creating misunderstandings uh anything that would uh, affect the uh, uh environment that you strive to work in uh is something that i would associate to negative side of the ego when it comes to self respect and ego there is a very 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 thin thin line of uh uh thin line to distinguish the two so it is you'll never know whether you are actually uh, having your own self you are doing certain things for self respect you know for appreciating yourself not waiting for somebody else to appreciate you you're just appreciating yourself for the hard work that you have done or the achievement that you have done so that you're just got to have that passion to go forward that is self respect in my opinion so um and there is a huge there is a very small uh, difference between the two and it's very hard to identify as well hmm. so that that's the reason why you may get confused with self respect and ego and when it, when you are on the ego side you are you always see whenever you have this uh, uh, ego what well you already or you all you always have uh, ego so there is always a sense of con- confidence in what you do but uh there is always a possibility that you can go overboard and become over confident and overlook a lot of things and even that is a very uh, hard uh, line to identify between confidence and over confidence so it's it's quite a tricky thing that we are talking about when it comes to ego because it's kind of like a circle which is encompassing everything uh but still uh out of the uh, out of uh, every single uh, topic that we are trying to connect it to yeah uh, d- does that uh, help uh, guys your points are valid what you are saying i i think that is uh, that is correct so uh, what i understand you are saying is as long as we are um, we are using the ego to motivate ourselves in doing something is good but as soon as i uh, start to make 
another person feel bad even when i am doing something good uh, let's say for example uh, the example that ambika took that feeling that i am a good daughter uh, if that motivates that thought motivates her to do good is good but if the thought converts into i am a i am a better daughter than my brother or than my so then that sense of competition or anything that kicks in uh, that might start to so she may not even say it, but um, her way of approaching will start to project that on them and they'll start to sense and feel that even when she is doing something good uh, it is not done from a pure space it is done to to prove something so then that that kind of just goes into a different direction altogether so as long as we are self motivated by the thought that i'm i'm doing this and it is giving me a sense of achievement or sense of satisfaction or, or anything like that uh, i i also think that it's good but if i make it into a competition whether i am even if i am like a meditator and if i start to talk in a way that i'm a better meditator than you or i i know more about meditation than you or i can i can maintain the meditative state lot more than you or lot whatever like start to make you feel bad about it in a way then yeah then then i going into then perhaps the the self respect part that pragya talked about will come out in the other person as well as they feel attacked they feel attacked for no reason um you are doing something you want to do but then all of a sudden you just made it about the other person that i am doing it better than you and uh, and then here yeah, then the self respect part will come out in the other person and it will definitely go into a different direction altogether the whole thing i want to give an example for the situation in any organization we go ahead and divide the entire like work ban- bandwidth and all into the top performers and the best performers okay and someone who is the mediocre performers and someone who are not the performers at all so the top performers after a certain while okay they start acting and behaving in the way that the entire company is running due to their efforts only and as nobody is doing or there's there's no one's contribution into the company's success yes yes so then they correct so if you if you are self motivated by the thought that you are top performer nothing nothing bad in that that that, that gives me the boost that gives me the kick mm-hmm. to perform then then why not let me tell myself whatever i want to tell myself i'm not hurting anybody else but if i right. start to hurt other people with that thought if i start to make them feel inadequate um that's where things go wrong i think that's that's the problem yeah i uh, i agree with uh, what uh, both of you said uh, see uh, i understand I've, i've been in this situation i've seen exactly what has happened uh, in these situations as well so by experience, what i can say is only that whether you have a top performer or whether you have uh, under performer it doesn't really make a difference because At the end of the day, both of you end up doing the same kind of job. As long as you have the same kind of environment which is healthy and which is uh, constructive for you to uh, develop the required skills to achieve the results, it, is, it should not matter. But like uh, it was mentioned, uh, when top performers start behaving that it is uh, because of their hard work and their uh, skill set, uh, the achievements of the companies are... coming into picture and everything like that yes that that that, that is something which is kind of uh, uh, an immature uh, attitude you could say because when when you are a top performer uh, i would like to well i i personally try to when i when i am a top performer i personally try to share whatever i've learned with others because i understand that the chain is only as strong as the weakest link and i always think that i am the weakest link so i keep that thought in my mind to make sure that i don't 
uh, do the mistakes which is going to cost my team the same way i try to make sure that anyone who is not performing like me i would try to pull them up to that top performer pool so that they can pull another peer, another person so it needs to be a chain reaction that needs to happen uh if you look at uh, economics uh, there is uh, a general thing in uh, across uh, the uh, economic uh, community which uh, which kind of generalizes to this particular gist uh grow and let grow is the best kind of environment where you can actually sustain and develop the uh, industries and the pool of companies in for the uh, advancement of the country so that that attitude should not only be at the company level or at the business level in the market should also be in the uh, bottom level of the company where people are supposed to grow and also let others grow so so that's where you have to bring in the positive side of the ego and not the negative side of the ego so having the ego over there or constructive uh, purpose is going to serve a lot of things so uh, i just yeah while i'm listening to you akshay uh, when you are dropped out i and raga had a very short uh, point that we discussed so i would like to bring it again in the circle that yeah, uh, yeah. you know people feel that they have done it alone when they they say what is the fine line of being proud of something and taking uh, taking complete credit or just saying that it is only me who did it so i think what you are talking about is also in a way or i don't know you can clarify uh, if it's not the case but in a way you are saying that it is i have done it because i have also got like you know in the sense that you are also con- recognizing the contribution others make to your success but when it is uh, the pride ego that line when it's crossed over it means that only i have done it and it's my uh, work or my own thing so uh, okay uh, right uh, the the pride is okay i'll just uh, try to uh, give you this as an example okay we, we all uh, have had the uh, uh, great uh, opportunity to have parents around us who have been supportive to us who have helped us uh, become a bit better people that we are today okay so if you look at our parents uh, what and what they did for us uh, let us look at that from this perspective they started doing they started their lives on their own they start i mean uh, at one on a Hi Akshay we've lost your voice. Hello? The same goes with us. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we lost you in the thing. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just yeah. I was just saying that our parents uh they have made certain achievements in their lives and despite those achievements they have pushed us to develop and become far more successful than they have been. The mm-hmm. same goes with our teachers as well. So what if you look at it that way uh in in our uh, most of our uh, uh in the languages there there's a saying that when a teacher is when a when a student surpasses the teacher the teacher is proud when a uh, son surpasses the father the father will be proud something like that so that that, that shows the uh, amount of mentorship that is involved in making another person better that means to say Hmm. the the person who is actually uh, teaching the uh, kid the father who is hmm. teaching the kid or the teacher who is uh, tutoring the child they are trying to make sure that this child is not going to repeat the mistakes that they have done in the past and they are going to overcome it by sharing their experience just hmm. ma- trying to make sure that they don't have to reinvent the wheel yeah yeah there is there is a component of pride over there there is a component of uh, achievement and satisfaction with the teacher and the parent as well mm. but still the result is completely different it is constructive and it is something which is going to help the world at a, uh, on a later stage help the person who is actually 
gaining the knowledge to achieve his own goals in everything mm-hmm. in life you could uh, uh, sorry, sorry, summarize it too so uh yeah it, it it's 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 an obligation that uh, comes as part of being a top performer or being someone at, uh, who has grown to the next level so that's why uh, they probably say uh, education knowledge experience they're not privileged they're responsibilities it's not something which certain people are supposed to have it's something which has to be cascaded to everybody mm-hmm. yeah that's only then there will be go ahead yeah on, only then there will be uh, an ecosystem which is going to be uh, sustainable in my opinion mm, the environment yes. yeah yeah anything you wish to add i agree with actually on to this point so nothing much to add from my end okay okay sorry anything yeah i also agree on this so so uh the yeah this is about time right now we still have 5 minutes so if we want to add to this and um yeah so the question which came to my mind of what akshay said and before that what pradya said that you know top performers become something and they feel the contribution uh i feel there is a sense of interdependence that's cultivated in an environment that you're talking about akshay when that interdependence is i feel recognized and is uh, valued then the pride doesn't go to the head then the pride is constructed and i feel when we don't recognize other people's contribution in our success it becomes ego uh that that fine line is uh visible to other people not to us most times because we too involved in the happenings but uh, yeah i mean the good idea would be to be mindful of when we are crossing that line and constantly keep in check uh, as a process as a as a practice in uh, mindfulness yeah in fact uh, that would make uh, our uh, life and environment ego friendly like there is eco friendly so like ego friendly teams or ego friendly family where we are okay with other people's ego coming in picture and constructively building us and others and uh, taking that uh, uh, step to grow and let go uh yes amika i i completely agree with what you said uh, there is always uh, an interdependency with uh, people in the society i mean uh human beings are uh, social people they are social beings there is always one or the other way uh, in which we communicate we interact and we uh, involve with uh, the remaining people in the society so it's it's always there so see okay uh, we okay j- just to be uh, realistic uh, it's we are able to, the five of us today we are talking about uh, this emotional uh, intelligence aspect of a human's life ego uh, probably the others who are around us might not be uh, having the opportunity to com- contemplate on this particular perspective yeah so it's it's likely that uh, it's more than likely that uh, they they might not uh, look at, uh, they might not uh, be able to overcome issues that are generally uh, one of the reason uh, one of are rising because of ego so i have a small uh, trick that i that has been helpful for me i mean i don't know i'll just share it to you guys if it works out it works out or you can modify this trick to whatever works out for your uh, purpose so what i do is at the end of the day i take about 10 or 15 minutes uh, mm-hmm. sit down Uh, when I'm alone, I'll just I'll just recollect the activities that I've been carrying out, you know, since the morning till the end of the day. 
till that particular point so i'll just try to recollect the decisions that i've taken recollect my actions just to see whether uh, what i just to analyze or understand if i could have done it better or mm-hmm. just to see if that has resulted in some kind of a conflict between someone so that maybe i can try and uh, resolve it it's it's when when we are in an environment where a lot of people are there everybody has an opinion so we we speak other person might also say something and uh, it's quite likely that when i say something the other person might not really like what i have what i have told but still he has accepted it so uh, i just have to understand that although he, it was not something that was uh, agreed upon but it was accepted so there is a component of friction over there so i'll probably have to look at that and handle it in a different way just to make sure that we are not going to uh clash into each other when uh, try uh, going into a fist fight so yeah just re- recollecting your actions and decisions and just trying to think whether if you could have done it in a better way is probably going to help you on a long run because for two reasons one you'll be able to uh at least anticipate the uh, foresee uh, anticipate some problems which mm. may come up it may not uh, but it may, if it does at least you have prepared at least you are aware that there could be a problem and the second point is you find different ways to actually do things better so probably a decision like uh, buying a car today was very satisfactory but sit back think about it think about uh, the emi that you have to pay for the next 3 to 5 years oh yeah and yeah, you could probably come up with a uh, thought that i i don't i didn't need a, such a big car i probably could have make do uh, with the smaller one so yeah you you could come up with different different uh, solutions for the same problem so there is never uh, an answer to uh there is one answer to the problem there is, there are multiple answers so uh, it just gives us the perspective to look at different answers that's it yeah i think self reflection and contemplation uh yeah is, is very important like they say that you don't take unresolved parts of you to the bed you try and you have, even if you have self reflected on it and it has not resolved it's okay but you not it's not unresolved in your head then. it could be unresolved physically yeah. but uh, it's not in your yeah. head you have ticked the box and uh, yeah i i find it to be very productive i think my productivity shot up after i started doing this also i am not very religious be doing it like very consistent about this but most times when i have things like this yeah uh, it's almost a ritual uh that we follow in in the organization also internally so yeah beautiful input uh that's, that's great tip definitely yes so uh swati so and pragya would you like to add anything to this i'm try practicing this i think it will help me out super super thank you swati yeah no thing yet nothing to add more I agree to what they say. And do share if you do it tonight uh, on tomorrow's call. It would be really nice to hear from you guys. Okay, so it's 12 and uh, um, thank you so much. It was a beautiful discussion. Thanks, Akshay, Swati. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Yeah, and Thanks, everyone. Yes. Bye. Bye. Have a great day ahead. Sachin is down today. Uh, yeah, he has a uh, yes pain in his uh, feet. Right? Yeah. Like with some jaw yeah. issue. <laughs> Finding it out. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> you have to bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem.